Don in London, hello, June 7th. My video is all about recovery and practicing the steps, 12 step program of Alcoholics Anonymous in real life. I made that decision yesterday to just to do a short version video, if you like, of what it does it mean to practice the 12 steps on a daily basis. Well, as there are 12 steps, I've got plenty of choice how they may impact on me, or how my behavior can change, and how my attitudes can change daily, depending on what's happening to me. So if I know how I feel, if I know what's going on, if I know why. I get free choices, free choices around reality. It doesn't mean reality is always going to be the way I want it to be. Indeed, far from it. It's probably never going to be the way I want it to be, but reality is what it is. So if I can see what's going on in front of me, know how I feel about it, why, and what can I do, then life starts daily. So how do I feel today? I feel okay. A bit tired, which is not unusual, with uh, one or two complaints which won't go away, besides alcoholism, and I'm okay. So when I wake up in the morning I ask myself, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? And if I'm going to be with people, I can say, how, am, how are we feeling, why, and what can we do? So on the one hand, about empathy with others, seeing it through the, the eyes of others as life is too for them, and also how life is for me, assertiveness and empathy. Sounds like a song title, or maybe it ought to be a book title, I don't know. I don't know that I'll be writing it anyway. But for Tuesday, today, June 7th, I was just looking at some of the, the words I'm probably going to put out on Facebook or on my YouTube video. Here we go. Past, present and future. We can be beguiled by the past, reminded of good times and bad times. We can evoke powerful memories and extremes. We can look forward and miss the present moment, today. We can make choices based on reality, always the present perfect moment to change. Indeed, the only place we can change is now. And long-term hope, which is part of the daily reflections which follows on after this part of the video, always in the action and today. If we can ground ourselves in what we can do now, cannot do now, we set a plan for the day. Needs met, wants in balance. So often, if my needs are met, reverb my head, enough porridge in the cupboard, and Goldilocks coming, not coming. Wants in balance. I, don't, I, I forget the wants, if my needs are met on a daily basis. We can be hopeful long term, we can be hopeful, long term for us can be this one day. Our actions today are foundations and the future becomes possible. So every day is a foundation day. Today is the rest of my life, rather than tomorrow. And yesterday I was reading, I don't know where it came from, I think it was Steve Jobs had something to say, he was the, he's the apple man. Your time is precious, don't waste it living someone else's idea of life. Don't be trapped by dogma, my dogma or anybody else's dogma. Don't feel like you're fastened down to hard rules which are imposed by others. The result of other people's thinking. Don't, be, don't drown in others' opinion. Listen to your own inner voice. So there is an inner voice in us which says, should I be doing this? Ought I be doing this? Can I be doing this? What if I do this? Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition, because ultimately we often do know what is right for us on a daily basis. You already know what you truly need to become. And what do we need to truly become? Ourselves, I guess. And, of course, freedom in action. So what helps me on a daily basis? Well, I always remind myself of step one. I am powerless over alcohol. And I'm also powerless over people, places and things, their attitude and behaviour. But it doesn't mean I can't influence them or persuade them to a point of view. But if I try to control them, I'm as much a prisoner of what I want them to do, as they are me trying to make them so. So powerless over people, places and things is good news. So no longer trying to control the world, just live in the world and see what it can offer me on a daily basis. Step two, where I, I do believe I can be restored to sanity on a daily basis, always in the moment of now, 
if I get mad about something, because things will trouble me, trouble me, and sorely trouble me often, I need let go of thinking I can put it right on my own. So always get the in, getting the input of other people. Step three, letting go and letting good things happen. And letting go the bad things that happened, so there is room for new stuff. And this, this month is all about step six for me. Defects of character identified in my life story or my self-appraisal of assets and liabilities. What sort of a day do I want? Do I want a step six day which is full of extremes of fear, extremes of putting on a brave face and not letting the world in, and ego edging good out, or some people say edging God out? Or do I want a day where there is a bit of balance, enough fear to wake up, enough fear to put on a brave face when it feels a bit hard, and enough ego to say, I'm worth it? Or courage, faith and confidence, enough courage, enough faith, enough confidence, and know that every moment I can be tipped either way into defects of character, too much extremes of fear, from brave facing and ego, or so joyous I forget to keep my feet on the ground where I have faith, courage and confidence without foundation. That's how it can be. That's it for today. What follows? Daily readings and stuff about step six. Yeah, it's June. June 6th. No, oh, June 7th. More later. Don in London, hello, it's June 7th, my video all about recovery from addiction to either substance and behaviour, and uh, I use the daily reflections to share a little bit of experience, strength and hope. So for June 7th, it talks about long-term hope. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth. Or rather, for me, God is truth, God is love, God is wisdom. So it's about natural balance. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. So when we're out of balance or to extremes of natural instincts, or using behavior or attitudes to fix ourselves. That's when we're out of balance. It goes on to say, this is where long-term hope is born and perspective is gained both of the nature of my illness and the path of my recovery. The beauty of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, lies in knowing that my life with God's help, that's the truth, love, wisdom of others, will improve. The AA journey becomes richer, the understanding becomes truth, the dreams become reality, and today becomes forever. As I step into the AA light, my heart fills with the presence of God, or simply good and good conscience, depending on whatever your beliefs are and what you understand God to be. So it's a personal choice always. Don in London, hello there. It's uh, June 7th, 2009, and it's just 9 o'clock in the morning. A bit dark here in London. We had thunder and lightning already from about 5 or 6 this morning. Lots of rain, and all it said was light showers today, so who knows? Maybe it's only just started. Anyway, my, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior. So why, why was I talking about the weather, what, what we do in England? So addiction for me was alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be perfect and never so, uh, trying to work as hard as possible, trying to be in good relationships, trying to be whatever I thought I ought to be on a daily basis or other. I wasn't quite sure who I was or what I was or why I was doing things. So life was very confusing but what helped me most during those years and years and decades of not, not, not knowing who I was or what I was doing other than trying to please other people. Uh, drink was my best friend, alcohol. It took the edge off, made me able to suppress my feelings or feel things more greatly, depending on my overall mood. 
and it's not such, a, not such a different story for most people especially in the UK we have a heavy drinking culture so on the one hand we see ourselves as being in the, right in the middle of it because we can drink people under the table and at the same time we have no idea our ignorance is not bliss around addiction <coughs> and it's very easy to fall into that trap and the, the good news is I see people far younger than me even in their teens coming into the fellowship of AA that's Alcoholics Anonymous it's a self-healing process AA it, it can't tell you what to do it can only offer suggestions about life and how to live it one day at a time and learning how to understand our emotions what might be spiritual and how to stay well physically or as best we can with whatever else we've got to contend with and most people have something to contend with from backache to whatever it is so the fellowship is full of people with experience, strength and hope and they share it and uh, I cannot speak for AA would not want to it's full of unique authentic people with their own take on what is life about so all I do go learn some wisdom see how they do it learn and try and implement it for myself sometimes it seems like it just happens because I get to understand how life can be and sometimes I, I have to really try very hard to understand what is being said and also try hard to explain what is being said by others and that can cause difficulties misunderstandings are abundant so what is life about I don't know to be happy I guess so to learn to get some experience wisdom make it worthwhile in some way so we have to get the right measures I suspect as well so my measures in the past were material success what people thought about me the type of car I had where I lived uh, the overall impression what sort of clothes fashion you name it we all we all tend to go for the superficial measures and what we forget most of often if we're addicts or in fear of life and my life was very fearful I guess to be like that full of ego and putting on a brave face it was all about what was on the external what was on the outside what people saw so if they saw somebody who was okay they would leave me alone and I could get on with my um, in indulgences with my best friend I guess and people who drank as, as well as I did but even though some people drank as much as or more they are not alcoholics only I can say I am one and that's it I am an alcoholic in recovery one day at a time so we have the gamut of experience strength and hope to learn about life and what we can do on a daily basis that's what works and um, that's the simple message which AA offers with a 12-step program of action to change attitude and behavior to live well rather than to endure life so for me uh, the fellowship got me into recovery eventually and uh, I had to have a lot of medical support family support community support and I couldn't have done it on my own it was the moment of clarity when I realized I cannot do this on my own I need help and uh, then it wasn't so awful I admitted and accepted I couldn't do it so AA what's it all about and I speak here candidly about how it impacts on me but I don't share about other people and their lives or I can just share in a general way about what AA does for us so every meeting I go to there's a preamble and the preamble goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help other alcoholics help others to recover from alcoholism I need a new set of teeth the only requirement for membership is a de desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and that's all on a daily basis and I'm just reading up a little card here which has the I can't focus in but it says that is the AA preamble it's got the serenity prayer on it and then in the middle bit it's got the 12 steps of AA which are about people open honest and willing to change and the 12 traditions uh, all about unity service and recovery so the fellowship is about unity service and recovery and we're all part of included and not excluded unless we say we are and the 12 steps are about how to keep sober a day at a time and make life 
well, live life, no, experience life, experience the good of, as well as the bad of, and learn some wisdom about how to make it, I suppose, more more fulfilling and more rich and certainly my life is more fulfilling these days and more rich because I have an understanding of who I am and that only happens on a daily basis so who am I? Don, alcoholic in recovery and I'm so pleased I am and uh, you know, I'm not gushing this morning but I'm very happy to be alive because without the fellowship and my family I would certainly have perished this book, as Bill sees it is uh, a reading anytime you like uh, just to give a bit of uh, moral support or thinking support or emotional support when you can't get to a meeting and on page 124 he says here freedom to choose and uh, I'm doing these in a sort of book order rather than any particular day so it says here looking back we see that our freedom to choose badly was not after all a very real freedom uh, drinking not a good decision for me when we chose because we must this was not a free choice either and that's when I became an alcoholic, because I was uh, unable to make a choice. It wasn't free anymore. But it got us started in the right direction. Then, when we chose because we ought to, we were really doing better. And this is me into sobriety and the solution. This time, we were earning some freedom, making ourselves ready for more. And that's to be included in part of life. Not controlling it, or not running it, but part of the, the whole thing that's going on around us. But when, now and then, we could hardly make right choices without rebellion, holdout or conflict, then we had our first view of what perfect, what perfect freedom under God's will could be like, or good conscience, or just being included. So the real freedom really is to understand where we are, and what we can do, and what we can't do. And how often do we spend time in the past ruminating about all the things that we've done, and why isn't life better for us? Or what can I do to improve my life? And what can I do tomorrow, the next day, the next week, or the next year? And sometimes we do need long-term plans to work out what is good for us based on a goal. But the more we stay in the present moment, the more chance we have of being happy, striving for what is possible, achievable, towards a goal or an end. And that's all about taking account of what is real. And for me, reality is spiritual, without denials, without filtering out, without our old ideas blocking us from new ideas, new ways of living, new ways of behaving, and loving people in our lives. So you could say, um, AA can help people who have become derelict, in every sense of the word, and smashed to pieces, come back to some sort of normality. And June 7th, the reading in this daily reflection, so I'll see how far I get with it before I have to sign off. It says it's about step four, and it says, Some, Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their in intended purpose. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they, are, they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due us, this is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or in good conscience what we are here to do, which is to understand the reality of now and live it, live it. That is the measure of our character defects, if you wish, or of our sins. And I'm running out of time. So more about defects on tomorrow, probably. Serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to do this and know the difference on a daily basis. Long may it be so. Don in London, June, at June 7th, 2008, around about quarter to two in the afternoon. My video is all about recovery. And I'm back from my uh, midday meeting of AA. And it's held in the hut just off Flood Street, in the heart of Chelsea, just off the King's Road. And uh, it was a very good meeting. And I just got there in time to make the tea and set up and enjoy what people had to say. So sometimes it's about being silent and sometimes it's a bit, a bit like sharing at fellowship meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. And the reason why I go, obviously, is because I'm an, an, an addict alcoholic in recovery and I'm over four years now. I'm in year five. And that's quite a, that's quite a step forward for me. <coughs> and uh, just so you know what AA is all about, this is the preamble we share at the beginning of every meeting. 
Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking, apart from tea of course. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And sometimes we can and sometimes we can't. And uh, we learn the difference, if you like, on a daily basis by, this, uh, by the serenity prayer. And if you don't believe in God, it still works, because an exaltation to good conscience is, is all it requires. And what it says here, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And for uh, us in our program, what we learn is we are powerless over people, places and things, and alcohol once we start drinking. And we're powerless generally over the rest of the world, people, places and things, because that's just the way it is. And what we can do, as uh, Freud suggested, is be included, find some choices which are right for us, and find fellowship and love, or kinship, or community. So why do I go to AA most days if I can? In fact, I want to go every day. Maybe I need to go every day. Some people say, you don't need to go every day. You just need to get on with life. And uh, for me, what I find is that if I go to an AA meeting, life works better because I'm not trying to run the whole show on my own. And I'm less likely to be stuck in my ego, putting on a brave face and fearful. More likely to be putting, putting courage into practice, a bit of faith into practice, and getting my confidence back, as it may be, depending on what happens in a day. And today, <coughs> it's been really good. I've been uh, out, and uh, I was with my girlfriend last night, and that was lovely. And we had long talks and discussions. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful to be able to share with another person exactly where you are and what's going on. And that's inclusion. And around those things are choices to be there. Love, fellowship, affection, all those good things. And they're there for all of us. Once we stop being self-obsessed as an alcoholic in active addiction. And it's not easy for us. And that's why the fellowship is so important to me. And many times I've said, you know, AA is not the only way, but it works for me. And I work with it to find in practice what I may do with these 12 steps of change. So the 12 steps of change have kept me going for quite a long while, on, in the right direction, and gently going where I may go. Anyway, this is about uh, sharing knowledge and information, and the daily reflections that uh, help me work on my sobriety day to time. And it's important to have some sort of self-development every day, I feel, because we're trying to make sure we are changing to keep, a, keep abreast of where we are and also where we're going. So in a day, 24 hours, we're probably like around and awake for about 15 or 16 hours. And if we're very lucky, we get eight hours sleep. But I, I have an insomnia, so I don't really get that much. But um, I feel good and comfortable today. Looking at this one, Daily Reflections, for June 7th, and it's halfway through the day, so maybe I can see, see how it's been going. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due us, that is the point at which we depart from the, the degree of perfection that God, or good conscience, wishes for us here on earth. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. So the seven deadly sins. Uh, of course we have the assets, which are the seven virtues. And that comes from the 12 Steps of, tw of 12 Traditions, page 65. It goes on to say, This is where long-term hope is born, and perspective is gained both of the nature of my illness and the path of my recovery. The beauty of AA lies in knowing that my life, with God's help or good conscience in my case, will improve. The AA journey becomes richer, the understanding, become, uh, the understanding becomes truth, the dreams become realities, and today becomes forever. As I step into the AA light, my heart fills with the presence of God. And for me, it's uh, 
as I step into the fellowship, I get light, and my heart fills with the presence of good conscience and the spiritual connection today, which for me really simply is, in the moment of now, seeing reality as it is. And you know, it's, it's this thing of, is spirituality going to make me a better person? Or if I'm a deeply spiritual person, am I going to, co am I going to have some sort of uh, wisdom which is beyond measure or beyond other people? And the simple answer is no, no. Sim simply spiritual means, for most people, living in the day, understanding our feelings and getting on with life, and having less denials and filters, or being driven by outside forces to what we may achieve. And that's why it's so important, I guess, what we need to understand what measures we apply to ourselves. And in the, uh, the world of materialism, AA really has no currency at all. It, it doesn't actually provide you with the wherewithal to make a lot of money or even earn a living. What it does is give you emotional, spiritual and physical balance. So if I want to live my life open, willing and honest to make the best of what I have and deal with my emotional, spiritual and physical well-being on a daily basis through good contact with people who know and understand how to live to the good of good conscience or to the good of God then all well and good. Or if I get stuck in defects, which is about being frightened, or putting on a brave face and covering up the cracks, if you like, with my bravado, then I'm in trouble because I'm not being true to myself. And uh, on, the ba on the back of all these things, we suggest being true to oneself. And the share today really em emphasized that. You know, in the material world of work and career and everything else, we need to take account of what's going on and how we may how we may, how we may conduct ourselves. And even if we are exemplary in those measures applied by the material world, it doesn't mean we're going to get success in the sense that we can get everything that beyond our wildest dreams. In fact, it shows us that uh, beyond our wildest dreams in the material sense doesn't make us any happier. We just have more to worry about, that is, dealing with whatever it is we have to deal with. So I'm pleased where I am at the moment, and I'm just making emotional, spiritual, and physical progress a day at a time, or I'm in a place of uh, calm and comfort and serenity because I know the wisdom between the difference, what I can do, what I can't do. As Bill sees it, <coughs> page 163, it says, release and joy. Who can render an account of all the miseries that once were ours? And who can estimate the release and joy that the later years have brought to us? Who can possibly tell the vast consequences of what God's work through AA has already, already set in motion? So it could be, for me, good conscience. That's what works for me. And who can penetrate the deeper mystery of our wholesale del deliverance from slavery, the bondage to a most hopeless and fatal obsession, which for centuries possessed the minds and bodies of men and women like ourselves, and that's being alcoholic. Goes on to say, we, can, we think cheerfulness and laughter make for usefulness. Outsiders are sometimes shocked when they, we burst into merriment over the seemingly tra tragic experience of our past. But why shouldn't we laugh? We have recovered and have helped others to recover. What greater, what greater cause could there be for rejoicing than this? And you know, it is actually seeing the, the funny side of life. And uh, I always remember Monty Python in the life of Brian, where everything was going wrong. And uh, the final song is always look on the bright side of life. Well, I for one uh, am having a go. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? 
and only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship. That fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone, I guess, of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking and what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tra traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step six so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step six it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven, si deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many versions, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury it is also known as wrath wrath or wrath sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work and the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. 
But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilized. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions Remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. It was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others, 
how to live life beyond beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life for nature and God alike abhor suicide but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behavior can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement and that's the game progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves 
No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow? Or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger. And I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life gossip barbed with our anger a polite form of murder by character assassination has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else, why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can commit a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up 
at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people if they construct a list of still milder defects will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection we want to settle for only as much perfection as it will as will get us by in life according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by so the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God of God yeah so we progress and are not perfect we realize some of our potential but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them many many will ask at once ask how can we accept the entire implication of step six why that is perfection this sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't only step one where we made the hundred percent admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection the remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like, if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open mindedness we shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction it will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be are we ready so contingent on the day we ask are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook or personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely of course this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization at the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked 
or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? If I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do consider my options today or well, if I wake up angry fearful resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and being less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent 
the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today